Lindsay Olin Graham, lawyer, U.S. Air Force Reserve Colonel, and senior U.S. Senator from South Carolina. Born July 9, 1955, Graham was the first in his family to attend college. Graduating from the University of South Carolina in 1977, he continued on to receive his Juris Doctor from the University of South Carolina School of Law in 1981. By 1982, Graham began his six and a half years of service on active duty as an Air Force lawyer. Upon leaving, Graham joined the South Carolina Air National Guard where he actively served until 1993. Graham then switched to a career in politics. In 1994, he won a seat to the U.S. House of Representatives. And after serving four terms in the House, he was elected to the U.S. Senate in 2002. Now serving his second term, Graham still characterizes himself as having conservative values. He promotes himself as a leader in balancing the federal budget, protecting American rights, and opposing amnesty for illegal immigrants. In order to know if Senator Graham is truly conservative, let's examine his stance on preemptive war, international treaties and organizations, involvement with the Council on Foreign Relations, as well as his stance on big government. Since Senator Graham has served in the military and promotes himself as a backer of friends in uniform, let's begin with his views on preemptive war. Starting in 2002, shortly after 9-11, Senator Graham voted in favor of using preemptive war against Iraq. Then, in 2005, Graham voted against a bill that would have eventually withdrawn U.S. troops from Iraq. By 2011, while giving a speech at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, Senator Graham once again showed support of preemptive war by saying, 18 months ago, uh, it was pretty bleak. The enemy was on the offensive, we were on the defensive, and President Obama's decision to send 30,000 troops uh, into Afghanistan, I think, was correct, and not a moment too soon. This is a small sampling of Graham's early support of preemptive war. The following examples show Senator Graham's neoconservative viewpoint becoming more obvious. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a bipartisan coalition together. We're going to put together a use of force resolution, allowing our country to use military force. You're insisting on the right to enrich. Given your behavior, you have abandoned that right. One, there is no right. We're not going to give it to you. Once you get them to the table, you let them know what the final deal would look like and say, take this or else. The following example is from 2013 in regards to Syria, which involves both Senator Graham and Senator John McCain. We must change the battlefield equation. Otherwise, you are going to see a regional conflict, the consequences of which we will be paying for a long, long time, and I yield to my colleague from South Carolina. Well, thank you. I would like to add my voice to the President's decision to act, because I think action by the United States and the international community is required. The importance of this example is not just the demonstration of Senator Graham's continual support of preemptive war, but also to highlight his connection with the Council on Foreign Relations through John McCain. Over the past decade, Senator Graham has had close ties with longtime CFR member John McCain. Time and time again, the two senators can be seen supporting the same issues. One in particular is the idea that the United States should become the policemen of the world. This is not only a viewpoint of the neoconservative movement, but of the CFR as well. When looking at the connection between Graham and McCain, it becomes clear that the CFR has not only influenced McCain, but Graham as well. Now that we know Graham's stance on war and how he aligns himself with the CFR positions, let's move on to foreign entanglements. Many conservatives see foreign entanglements, such as free trade agreements, as harmful to the U.S. economy and job market. Our founding father Thomas Jefferson warned about foreign entanglements in 1801 by saying, I deem one of the essential principles of our government to be peace, commerce, and honest friendship with all nations, entangling alliances with none. This idea has been a guiding principle of many conservatives. Now let's see how Senator Graham has voted. In 2000, Graham voted no on withdrawing from the World Trade Organization. 2006, Graham voted for a free trade agreement with Oman. 2007, Graham voted yes in promoting free trade with Peru. 
2011, Graham voted for the United States-Korea Free Trade Agreement Implementation Act. 2012, Graham supported the United Nations Law of the Sea Treaty. How are any of the preceding items in favor of the Constitution or America's sovereignty? Graham's voting record in regard to foreign entanglements reinforces his neoconservative viewpoints. If Senator Graham votes as a neoconservative on foreign issues, how do you think he will vote on domestic issues? Let's look at his views and voting record on national security and federal spending. In 2008, Senator Graham voted in favor of the bailout of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, as well as the Troubled Asset Relief Program, which authorized expenditures of $700 billion. 2009, Graham showed continual support of nationalizing banks. 2013, Graham voted to continue U.S. foreign aid to Egypt instead of using the money to repair U.S. bridges and other critical highway infrastructure. Now that we have seen a glimpse of Senator Graham's view on federal spending, let's see his view on national security. In 2001, Senator Graham voted in favor of the Patriot Act and its roving wiretaps. He continued his support again in 2006 and 2011. Although the Patriot Act was signed into law as a means of keeping Americans safe, citizens today are viewing it quite differently. When looking at the NSA's blanket monitoring and tracking of American cell phone data, Americans are saying it is unacceptable. Graham, however, feels quite differently. A prime example was caught on tape in 2013 during a Senate Appropriations Subcommittee hearing when Graham stated, I'm a Verizon customer. It doesn't bother me one bit for the National Security Administration to have my phone number. This is just one more example of how Senator Lindsey Graham supports the neoconservative perspective instead of true conservative values. So what can we as Americans do? For starters, many of us need to remember that politicians are working for we the people. This means the politicians' votes should represent the views of their constituents. Next, we need to make sure politicians are voting for what they say they stand for. This will take some education on your part. However, it is easier today than ever before. One tool that has been very effective in helping voters is the New American Magazine's The Freedom Index. This tool will help you find out how your politicians have voted and also give you the reasons as to why their votes were for or against the Constitution. As we become more educated, we need to share that education with others. Find out how constitutional your politicians really are and then hold them accountable. Together, we can raise awareness and make a difference.